All right, so we're back again. Uh, we're gonna go ahead now, we're gonna remeasure our main tunnel. We replaced our bearings with the plus 1000, standard HX um, ACL bearings. So since we have uh, been a couple of weeks, we waited for the bearings to come in on back order. We're gonna remeasure our crankshaft um, as a reference point for our bore gauge, and then we'll remeasure our clearances. And then we'll go ahead and we'll measure each individual one with each individual journal. And then uh, we'll move on to the next steps. We have got our uh, measurement where we want it. We're around 2,000, 2,3. Two, um, so that's perfect, exactly what we want to see. Um, so adding those bearings in there has given us what we want. We're going to go ahead now, we're going to measure each journal on the crank and measure each reference to which um, journal I'll be living in, just to verify that each individual clearance is exactly what we want it to be. Um, and then we'll record that in our blueprint, obviously. Um, so what we're going to go ahead and do now, we'll measure those and then we'll flip the block over, um, verify our um, cylinder walls are straight and uh, uh, not tapered. And then we will go ahead and start measuring our rods. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead now. We've measured our journals, um, each individual journal, uh, reference to each individual one on the crank, and we're gonna go ahead now, flip the block over. We're just gonna verify roughly um, the cylinder walls and um, piston clearance is good. And then we can move on to our rods and then we'll begin um, measuring those. Okay, so next up we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna check our cylinder bore taper and out of round. Um, just like we've done in the past, we're gonna just zero our um, bore gauge inside the cylinder and then we'll uh, just reference that around each one and see how we are in comparison. Okay, we measured our cylinder bore uh, out around and taper and it is uh, really, really good. Um, we have under four tenths uh, out around and taper, um, even lower than that in some areas. So maximum four tenths, um, really, really, really good. Um, this should be an excellent, excellent uh, ring sealing um, block. Um, so now we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna zero our bore gauge to the piston OD, um, just to verify that our clearances are, are gonna be the same. We're basically zero, zero across all six. Um, so we're not gonna have any sort of uh, variance um, from piston to piston, um, just based on what we've measured here. But uh, we're gonna verify one and, and double check. So we just measured our piston to wall clearance, just a rough measurement, um, not a final measurement or anything, um, just to make sure that the cylinders uh, have been machined correctly um, for the correct clearance. We have about three and a half thou, which is what we wanna see. Um, three and a half thou to just under four um, with that little bit of out around a taper. Um, but the minimum specification is what we're really worried about. So that's gonna be three and a half thou, and that's perfect. Um, so now we're gonna go ahead Head. We'll flip this back over, cover it up, and then we're going to move on to measuring and checking the rods. Okay, we just finished cleaning up our rods here. Um, we're gonna go ahead now and torque each one down to the uh, factory specification that the uh, Manly Rod recommends. And then we'll go ahead and we'll measure the uh, size of the big end. Um, we'll measure our piston pin clearance and then we'll go ahead and clean our bearings and install those and then verify our clearance against the crankshaft. Okay, so what we've done now, we've gone ahead, we've torqued our rods down, um, no bearings or nothing like that. Um, we've just torqued them down to specification, which is for Manly. This bolt um, is gonna be 60 foot pounds. Um, and if you uh, um, want to, which we like to do, stretch them. Uh, measurement is uh, 5 8 to 6 2 thou. Um, so that is what we've checked these all down to, or uh, torqued these all down to. And now we're gonna go ahead and measure them for um, out around and taper. Uh, this is a, a critical area where you really want the rod to be totally round. Um, the margin of error I like on this is as close to zero as possible. Um, so you definitely don't want to have more than two tenths or you'll, uh, you'll potentially have a problem. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna zero the uh, bore gauge in the center of the rod. Um, and then when we're checking for tapering out of rounds, all we have to do, we'll just verify that 
um, left, right, top, bottom. Just make sure we got no taper, no it around, and then we'll verify the size afterwards. But we'll do this measurement, we'll check each rod, make sure they're all the same size, and then we'll check size afterwards. So while we're measuring these, we want to make sure we're zeroing in the center, obviously. And then this is probably the most ideal rod that you'd want for measurements. We come back almost a perfect zero, maybe one tenth, and then taper. Again, under one tenth, almost nothing. Um, that's the ideal scenario we want for a, a big end of a rod. That way when the bearing goes in there, um, it does live. So now that we've uh, torqued down our rods, we've checked for taper and out of round, we're gonna verify the size of the big end. Um, your specification is gonna be uh, a little bit of a window, um, but 2.1663 to 2.1667 is gonna be our window, a minimum and maximum. Um, so we're gonna set our uh, micrometer um, up to the 2.1663, the minimum, um, and then we're just gonna run our bore gauge through there, zero it out, and then we'll verify uh, as a reference measurement how big the big end is. Um, generally, if you're within that range, it's totally fine. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so we've uh, zeroed our, our bore gauge inside of the um, micrometer. Again, if we've left our gauge zeroed to the big end size of the rod already, and we go to slam the micrometer, we'll be able to see the difference right away um, because we know all of our rods are the same um, diameter already. No need to technically measure them all, but we did go ahead and measure them all just to be 100% sure. Um, so we're going to go ahead now. We've, now we've verified our big end sizes, tapering out around. We're going to verify our piston pin clearance um, before we move on to uh, measuring our pistons um, for final fitment. Okay, so we've measured all of our piston pins. Generally, they are always within a tenth of each other. Um, I have never really seen one that was uh, out to lunch. Um, so there's not much mixing and matching that has to happen here. Um, but what we've measured here is the 0 0.86585. We're gonna take our uh, micrometer, uh, we're gonna zero our bore gauge inside the measurement that we've taken for the piston pin, and we're going to verify our clearance on the rod and on the piston, and then we'll see what we have there. checked our piston pin clearance on both the rod and the piston. Um, the rods are one thou, almost exactly across all six, and our pistons are just a smidge tighter, about eight to nine tenths, um, which is totally acceptable. We're gonna go ahead now, um, we're gonna disassemble our rod caps, we're gonna clean our bearings for the rods, and then we'll slap those in there, we'll measure our crank, and see what kind of oil clearance we're working with on there, and then we'll move on to the next steps.